Hello everyone, this is Dr. T. Varlakshmi discussing you about the trade forecasting, capital budgeting and cash budgeting as a part of business economics and financial analysis. Trading forecasting. Forecasting is estimation of the future elements is called as the forecasting. If that estimation are related to this trading activities, especially in term in business activities, expecting about the future availability of the capital and the financial aspects, growth aspects and the raw material requirements and the need and availability of that raw, merit, raw material to the business activities and also the risk estimation of the business activities in the near future, then all, all that estimations with the real justifications that will be called as the trade forecasting. So here the forecasting means it is not an imaginative, it must have some justification. That is, so today, we are facing the economic recession because of that one our growth of that company may be less or the more so like this based on the nature of that business if they decide that is the growth estimation or with the real assumption of the uh, present market situations it should not be an imaginary or overlook it should be a uh, justifiable expectations of the future or, or future uh, destination of the business activities is called as the trading forecasting so in that estimation if they are all estimating the funding activities then that will be called as capital budgeting so that is whether can they invest into the particular machinery or not? Can they invest into that particular plant and plant or not? Can they purchase that particular unit or not? Can they expand that business or all not? Like this, for all these questions, if they give the justifications, they will do certain calculations and the methods and based on that one, they will alloc if they allocate the funds, then that will be called as the capital budget. Simple thing, if the organization wants to purchase a land, that land worth the present is 20 lakhs. And uh, future, they are going to be uh, gain uh, a return of, this is the cash outflow of the organization that which is cash going now at present. And in the future, that is within four years, if they are expecting 50 lakhs from that organization means, uh, that is 30 lakhs of the benefits they are all expecting and the market conditions. So, uh, four years they are going to be get this 50, uh, 50 lakhs means within, within two years. So, within two years or only they are going to be get back their investment amount. Which means that done some uh, mathematical uh, uh, knowledge, they have implemented some mathematical knowledge, they have analyzed this market conditions and they uh, based on that one they have interpreted and going to be taking the decision of can they go for the investments or not. That is called as the capital budget. In our houses also, we won't think about the, uh, uh, do we have to pay the rent or do we have to eat? So these kind of the elements we won't think, but we will think about, do I purchase this AC or do I purchase this car? Do I invest into that land, building, etc. Such decisions are only will, uh, will think more. That's why in the organizations are also, mostly this capital budgeting is aimed at fixed assets and fixed investments than the short term and operational activities. So that's why capital uh, capital budgeting will more concentrate on the fixed capital and fixed assets and long term investments of the business activities. If we see there are eight important steps are all involved in capital budgeting. So before going to be investing, first thing is they need to identify where has to invest that one. That is based on the good ideas, realize the need for the project and suitable projects which are <clears throat> for the 
identified one and considering of the alternatives so, so this land this uh, suppose they are purchasing the house different locations different alternatives or can they take that uh, house or not is that necessary for them or not is a very important one even the capital budgeting in the first step or also they will follow all these steps then after once it is decided the next step is allocation of this funds for that allocation they have to carry out the financial analysis that is what are the cash inflows and cash outflows expected cash outflows and alternative uh, in this if any two to three options are all there which one is the best one so that analysis they need to do and based on that one they will allocate the funds once they have allocated the next thing is they need to evaluate is it beneficiary uh, the expected returns are all coming or not or the over over cost is going to be investing into that one or not how it is doing that that work is called as evaluation or the selection of the investment for that one they need to choose the project of the undertakings that is the all the elements of the procedure procedures mechanisms involved in that project and monitoring that uh, of management activities in that one and carry out the post completion audit uh, facilities these are all the steps involved in the capital budgeting elements at various stages so if we see this uh, features of this capital budgeting it deals with huge funds because it is a long term oriented that's why even the risk is also very high and it affects the future competitive strengths of the organization that's why the taking of the decisions regarding the capital budgeting is that not that much of easy it is very difficult to take that one and it is going to be estimating the large profits of the organization so it is going to be affecting the long term long term activities of the business organization and also affects the present cost structure of the organization sometimes if they not uh, chosen the best thing it may be irreversible to the uh, organization they can't get back that losses they 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 may be affect the entire organization also so this is the features of this capital budgeting so why this capital budgeting is important means it helps in undertaking the risks and its effects estimation with the help of this capital budgeting and it is uh, this knowledge is going to be using for the decision making in the investment opportunities and various techniques are all using in this uh, capital budgeting like payback period net present value method internal rate of return method so like this the techniques are all using in that one and making an informed decision considering all possible factors is possible with the knowledge of this capital budgeting and choosing the investment options wisely is also one of the reasons for the capital budgeting and it increases the shareholders wealth as well as the profit and based on the advantages in the market and also if they have already planning with them if there are all any overflows are all there overflows can be controlled with the help of this capital budgeting and it abstains from over and under investment activities easily there are certain limitations too for the organization that limitations with the capital budgeting is decisions are all long term and major irreversible in nature so means once they have invested they can't get back that one that too it is going to be affecting the existence of the business and uncertainty leads to wrong application sometimes they thought that the land value will be increases but unfortunately they might have not get that much of the returns that one and techniques assumed the uh, techniques using for the estimation of the capital budgeting are all on assumption basis future will get that one that may get or may not get so there is a, a possibility of uh, more uncertainties in the expected returns and wrong decisions is going to be affecting the existence of the organization itself and that it is somehow expensive and requires the more skilled persons for the analysis that is some of the limitations of this capital budgeting and the techniques which are using in this uh, capital budgeting is traditional methods like payback period method and post payback period method and average rate of return method which is in short term pbp ppbp arr 
they won't take the value of present value of the money into the consideration that is time value of the money they won't take into consideration but if they uh, if they invest now well, how many years they'll get back their investment not profits uh, they if they invest 10000 every year 1000 rupees they'll get means 10 years it will take for them so that time period if they calculate then it will be called as the payback period after if the life of that project is 20 years means after payback period so 10 years 10000 additional amount their expectations are all called as post payback period on an average how much of returns they are going to be get are they getting 10% returns 20% 30% that, that if they expect then that is called as the average rate of return but if they invest 1 rupee now if the in the re, future if they are going to be get it for 1.5 rupee at present what is its value so that if they take into the time value of the money into the consideration that is called as net present value method at what rate the business has to get to get the maximum profits if they estimate that is the internal rate of return and the comparison of these uh, cash inflows and the ca cash outflows the ratio between the cash inflows and the cash outflows is called as the profitability index method anyhow in the next video we will have the discussion on these uh, methods uh, elaboratedly but these are all the existing methods of this estimation for the capital budget apart from this uh, capital budgeting if they only concentrates on cash instead of this another kind of the funds that is called as the cash budget so here only the monetary items are all only taking into the considerations that is expected cash inflows for example now if they want to uh, pay 10,000 rupees uh, they are going to be investing that is called as cash outflow for this one every year if they are expecting thousand rupees as this one that is will be called as cash inflow so here in the cash budget, they need to expect the cash inflows and the cash outflows to balance the cash balance of the organization. That is called as the cash budgeting activities of the organization. Because it is going to be helpful for the proper planning of the organization and tracking the seasonal variances and building brand value. That's why every business person need to take care of these cash budgeting elements in the organization. So that is about the capital budgeting and cash budgeting. So capital budgeting includes both funds and cash. That is the land building along with this cash. But in the cash budgeting only the cash expenditures will be taken into the consideration. Anyhow, cash budget is a part of this capital budgeting. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.